Let's take a look at how easy it is to get started using the Win Explorer bar. So let's go to the Net Advantage toolbox and locate the control name is called Ultra Explorer bar. So scroll up a little bit and here it is. We'll throw it onto the form. Now as I start building this app you'll know exactly which this control is, which one this is, which UI style you may have seen before. So the majority of times this control is usually docked against the left hand side of the screen. I've seen apps where it's docked on the right hand side, but you know the majority is on the left hand side. So let's work with that. And what you can do is you could start adding groups. So what I'll do is click on add a group, add a group, and add a group. And there's many different ways you can allow this control to show up on the form. And you can click on the style of control drop down and look at the very different views of uh, the various different views that you can select to show this so right now it's an explore bar and when you expand each one of these groups well there's no, no there are no items inside each one of these but think of like when you open up windows explorer and you're navigating and you see the various file properties on the uh, left hand side of the screen that's what this view is designed to show then we have the list bar which is pretty much you've seen this one here in the past in the older versions of Outlook we also have the toolbox which is pretty much like the Visual Studio toolbox if you want to create a UI where you have something similar to the Visual Studio style toolbox you can use this view then we also have the Outlook navigation pane which is the one that's also very popular out there where you just basically basically um, you know reproduce that same view with email and everything and all you know separate your items with these groupings and tabs and we also have the Visual Studio 2005 toolbox which is a little different it's kind of got these little expansion indicators that makes this different than the older versions of Visual Studio so we just have to add some items to this so let's take a look at working with the Outlook navigation pane for now so when I click on the control and let's go to its properties, I want to dock it to the left hand side of the screen. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I have a grid existing on this form already from a previous sample. I want to set its dock to fill just to show you how you can create an app that behaves a certain way. So let's say if I dock this to fill and the grid is going to kind of take up the whole form. So one way you could fix that is to right click on whatever control it is and bring it to front so it's at the same level as the explorer bar control and a couple of other things I wanted to take you walk through um, so if I click on the explorer bar the view style you can set that to let's say office 2007 and if I just kind of flip through some of these you get to see what it looks like Visual Studio 2005, Office 2003 so various different views you could also use App Stylist to set all this so I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you set it directly on the control itself and one of the properties that you definitely should set, and I'll show you right now is called the navigation pane expansion mode so you gotta find that one in here let me just expand this a little bit so I can see the properties so the navigation pane expansion mode when you set this to on button click or size changed look what happens we get this little UI element that just pops up and it allows you to collapse and expand the control. So let's run this real quick just to take a look at how it lo how it behaves. So here's my form. Let's maximize it. And you basically have this UI that allows you to access items within each content area. So right now there's nothing in here, but I click on this group and this group. So that's basically just to give you an idea of how to get started putting this on the form. So let's take a look at some properties. So if I click on this guy right here, let's go to the groups collection. And if I click on this, we get this designer, which is very helpful. So let me just make this a little bit bigger. So I want to take up as much space as possible so I can see everything. So this is one group right here. We have text. We could call this, let's say, um, home. And again, uh, you could put whatever you want in here. So how about home? How about um, orders and how about configuration?
and you could put whatever you want inside of these. So let's say if I go to home, and let's say if I expand this, notice the various settings that we have here. So there's a lot of different things, um, different types of things that you can do. So for example, if I just go to settings, and let's see, we go to style, and if I click this, I could select the style of whatever is going to show up in that panel. And usually what you do is you add items. Like an item is basically like a clickable link that, that could be associated with images, text, and so forth. So you could set small images, small images with text, large images, and any one of these guys. But you could also set up as a control container. And when you do that, you could shove whatever control you want in there. So let's do that for this one here. And how about orders? We'll go to the items. So here's the item collection. So right now it's empty. So the way you add items to this through this designer is you click on the group that you're interested in and then you add an item, add another one and another one and however many items you want. So let's say if I click on this first one you can give it a key like to programmatically identify it. So let's say, uh, let's see, place order and let's see, you do like place order caps then the user friendly way of doing this and let's see there's some settings here again you know different types of things say you could set the style for this one as a button state button label or separator so you could add separators in there too kinda like building up like a menu so let's see place order uh, let's see review products I'll call it, it doesn't matter so let's say products view orders so that's that one right there click on close and let's just we'll leave the last one empty for now because it's the same thing so we get some default images here but what you could do is you could assign an image list for the large images an image list for the small images and what you do is then you just basically hook up various images to each one of these guys so let's go back to home and I could place whatever control I want in here so if I go to the toolbox and let's say if I wanted to you know, just grab doesn't matter what I put in here just to show you as an example we put a chart in here or a gauge is good too so when I drag and drop the gauge onto the form it's gonna present me with the designer so it's loading up the designer and let's just choose a preset to make this really quick you can put a couple of gauges in there to make it look like a dashboard you know home like the home page you know a couple of dashboard items in there like grab this guy right here and apply and close and now that's in there and we could set the dock property to fill on that one and it's right in there and now let's click on this control again let's click on the explore bar look at the events so the item click event let's handle that one and then And what we want to do is the dot item dot key, and that's how you would basically handle the click events. Like for example, you want to put like a case statement in here, and you want to test out the key of the item that was clicked, and then you execute whatever logic you want. But I'll just put this in here to just show you, you know, how you could access the property that's most important for you during that time. Okay, so here it is. Now we're starting to have a populated explore bar. So I could get out of the way and I could click on this to take a look at items in there. So if I expand this guy here, notice that the dock for my gauge was set to fill. 
Oh look, this preset also allows me to move the needle, so which is pretty cool. So I have this guy here, I can go to this one. Orders. I had, I had, the best thing to do is to associate icons with the headers as well. So orders should get an icon. Um, configuration and home should all have an icon so that way whenever you're clicking on one of these guys you know what it is and also when you collapse it out of the way you know what it is you could look at the icon so I just kinda made this bigger than what is available here so if I go to this guy here and click on the second one if I go to configuration and orders actually if I click on one of these guys here Look at my output window. And when I click on these guys here, notice how we get the output down there. So that's how you would handle the click events. But this is a basic introductory to the explorer bar and definitely oh, you should be able to see the value that you can get in using this control. Resize this back to the way it was here. And adding this pretty much gives your end users the ability to kind of know how to navigate throughout your app because they click on the various groups here and whatever controls you place in there will be shown. Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.